I am going to teach you today how to marble on silk. Hi, I'm Lois and I make stuff. I'm an artist, writer, and songwriter. I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to share with you some of my art and ideas and show you a little bit about what's going on here in St. Charles. I'm at my house in Frenchtown. Today is October 11th, and um, it's a beautiful day outside, so I decide, it's a little cold, so we're not gonna paint out here, but we're going to set up out here because I've got all my lines and everything close to my basement, and I'm gonna show you what I have to set up. This is uh, my house in Frenchtown. It's an old historic house. And I've got some lines set up here uh, along the front porch because it's a beautiful windy day and it's great for line drying things. What I have are a bunch of fabric uh, strips. This is Habitat Silk Raw. I got them. Yeah, these are about 14 inches or so, 15 inches. And I to cut this fabric into these strips and treated them uh, for a reason. Um, I've got some crepe de chine silk blanks. These measure 11 by 60. And then I've got a couple of 72 inch crepe de chine six silk blanks that are 14 by 72. Uh, when these, I get these blanks from Dharma Trading Company. They're already hemmed, machine hemmed. And they have a tag on them that says 100% silk made in China. I always chop those off because they kind of get in the way. And I have all this set up on my front porch. And Ariel will be bringing some paper. Ariel's going to be working with me. And because it's so cold out here, I decided to set up in my basement here. So we've got two. Normally I have a big long tray that we can dip one scarf into. But I decided I didn't want to do that because I'm experimenting with this new product called Methacel. Well, it's not new, but it's new to me. I, in the past, I've used carrageenan as sizing for my marbling. Um, but this time I'm going to try the Methacel. So I've mixed up some Methacel here. And I'm going to give you the recipe on screen. in gallon uh, gallon jugs and two gallons should be enough for the the pans that I have these pans that I have are about 12 by 15 cookie sheets they're standard commercial cookie sheets and they actually work really well because of the way that the edges of the uh, sheet are you can kind of squeegee out against the sides of the cookie sheet when you're done your when you've done your marbling on your either your fabric or paper today we're going to use fabric and paper and um, I have a couple of reasons why I want to do fabric and paper today uh, I like to adapt some marble paper designs um, to uh, a computer JPEG file so that I can print out some paper bead jewelry with the marbling technique so that's kind of what I'm trying to do here, but in addition, I'm trying to do some fabric for quilts and things. And of course, I want to do this demonstration for you. These are all my supplies. The marbling paint I use is this Jacquard marbling paint. And this works really well for me. You need to make sure when you use this paint that it's very, very well mixed. And by that, I mean you can't just shake it. You actually have to take a brush and dig the goop out and it's been a while so there's going to be a lot of goop in these bottles I will prepare these bottles for when Ariel eventually arrives and um, make sure these paints are still good to go they haven't dried out or anything some of the items that I have here are items that we've acquired this is an actual uh, marbling comb that I bought online and I'll give you address of all the suppliers on this video. Here's another marbling comb. I bought also these broomstick. They're, they're like broomstick. I don't know what they call them exactly. 
but these are very good for a number of reasons. Um, they're good at spreading out the paint on the sizing, but they're also um, good at popping air bubbles and things. Uh, the, there's just like enough fiber here at the end of these sticks, broomsticks, to be able to pop those air bubbles, those nasty air bubbles you get. Um, toothpicks are always great. The nice thing about marbling is you can use stuff around your house. If you don't have marbling combs, you can get some of those acro combs at like the dollar store. There's a lot of cool stuff at the dollar store you can use for marbling. Um, some of these coffee straws are good. This is a clay tool um, for dotting. And this works really well for dotting the, the marbling um, designs. Also, uh, these um, popsicle sticks. You can never have enough, too many popsicle sticks. Also, I've got these um, condiment cups I bought in bulk. And I use the, them to mix dye. Sometimes if I've got a lot of, of silk dye and I want to mix colors, these are great because then you can put the cover on them and they'll stay good for a few days anyway. They'll eventually dry out with the cover on even. But um, this will retard the evaporation process on the dyes. These are good for actually mixing um, acrylic paints into. What else do I have? Brushes. Sometimes brushes come in handy. A lot of good rags. Uh, you can always do well with a few eyedroppers because uh, it's fun to, it's actually easiest to drop the drops of paint onto uh, your sizing. And then carrageenan is what I had, but today I'm going to be using the Methacel. So I think that's all of the supplies I have here. So I'm going to mix up these paints and get this area ready for Ariel when she comes to deliver the paper. Also, um, I have mixed up some more alum here for paper when she eventually gets here. And when you're doing paper, you want to do, you can use things like uh, something with a rough tooth like watercolor, but it doesn't really... The thicker the paper doesn't necessarily mean a better marbling. So um, what you really want is, this is a watercolor pad and it's cold press finish, but it's commercially done. So the tooth, it, it's not very rough on the one side. So we're going to try some of this. This is just cheap artist loft. Um, I'm going to see what Ariel, I think, is bringing some Bristol board which works good for mixed media. Ultimately, your marbling paint is an acrylic based paint. And I understand that you can use dyes and other stuff, but we're gonna, we're gonna work with, we're only gonna change one material at a time. And today the material that we're changing is the methacel. So we're gonna work with the methacel. I'm gonna get this area ready. And then um, hopefully Ariel will be here. Woo. Ariel is my daughter and she's helps me with my art projects. Um, she's very talented water marbler. She does nails and stuff like that. So she's got gloves on to protect her beautiful nails. Um, but she is a very good marbler. So she's going to help me demonstrate what we're doing. And we've got two, um, we've got two containers here. One for two trays, one for me to work in and one for her to work in. Um, but for right now, she's going to prepare the paper uh, with the alum mixture that I have. So I have an alum mixture that is one third cup alum to a gallon of water. And I use that to treat my paper. It's stronger, the recipe that I have is stronger for paper than it is for fabric. The fabric I mixed in alum with for two tablespoons on a gallon of water and soak that in there and then hang it up, hung it up to uh, dry. So we're working on the paper now and then we'll be ready to go. Ariel has this Strathmore drawing paper. She is cutting up and I have this 
Strathmore mixed media paper I think will work well. Uh, these, this will fit in the tray, this won't. So she's going to have to cut that up by hand because I don't have a paper cutter that's big enough. I have the paper here and I'm following the instructions from the YouTube video I saw, but uh, I'm treating this with the alum mixture that I talked to you about earlier. And so I'm just painting it on here. And the idea is that you put a mordant in the paper, that way it adheres to the paper a little bit better. And then I have them stacked on top of each other like this. So we're going to try that. Get our paper prepared and we'll be ready to go. I feel like maybe one time I, I mixed this up and I um, got it too thick. Looks like it will work. No? Mm -hmm. This is the methicel. So I have about almost an inch, I'm going to say, of methicel in my tray. I'm going to use this broomstick to pop these bubbles. I mixed this up about two hours ago and most of the bubbles are gone but some of these bigger ones are still here so we're going to try to get rid of them. All right, Ariel has solved the dilemma of the of the air bubbles in the methicel. Uh, you do just like you do for resin that's curing. You take a butane torch and you run it across the surface. Fortunately, we've discovered it's not flammable. Woohoo! <laughs> and then and then you just kind of dissolve the bubbles. You run it across the surface of it and the bubbles will dissolve. Okay, so here we go with the paints. All right, I've mixed these paints up. And I also have some little squeegee bottles that I use for my um, silk resist. And I've mixed some secondary colors and some primary colors that I use quite regularly. Black is something that you'll use a lot. White is something that you'll use a lot. And actually it's a good idea to put black down or white down initially to make the other colors that you put on top more intense. These paints have been sitting around for a while. I tried to mix them up really well. The jacquard marbling is eh, so-so. Uh, these paints, the quality of the paints, sometimes they have the like the little uh, silver ball in there for mixing. You can hear it. Sometimes they end up coming from the factory without the little ball in them. So you have to work extra hard digging out all of the sediment down at the bottom, making sure it's very well mixed. Um, even when that has a little rubber, a uh, little silver ball in there that you want to mix it up real good, especially if it's been sitting around because these have been sitting around for a year. So we're going to try them and see how they do. This is actually pretty good. You want to get the paint is going to spread out because of the uh, um, medium in it's mixed with, but also you don't want to spread out too quickly. So you want a good concentration on your gel and a balance between that and the um, amount of media that you have in your your paint. So this is mixed up pretty well. And this does pretty well. Um, I'm going to put some extra. I don't know what I'm doing here, so I'm just I'm just testing out the paint for right now. So that's good. And you don't want the paint you want the paint to be well mixed. You don't want it to fall down to the bottom. So if the paint is too thick or too clumpy, 
you're going to find that it's going to settle on the bottom of the the pan. Now, if it does settle on the bottom of the pan, it's not a big deal. It's not going to end up on your print. You're going to just have to ignore it because you'll see it there, but it won't show up on your print. Let's do this with paper. We're going to try the paper first. This is the paper that Ariel cut up for Bristol, and it's not quite wet. So, all right, here we go. Wish me luck. Good luck. You might have to wet the back of the paper to get it to roll better. And the best thing to do is to take some of this newsprint and go over the areas where there's still paint left mm -hmm. before you pick it up and sop off that extra paint. Okay. Drag it over. My camera's kind of in the way here too, so just drag it over the edge like this. And there's your. Oh wow, that's design. so cool! Isn't that cool? That is really neat. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's all slimy. And how long is it dry? Did we wash these off? Huh? Did we wash these off, or did we just leave the slime on there? Um, I thought we just left the slime on okay. there. Then we're going to hang it up outside. So Ariel has laid down her pattern. She's got her um, paper. She's supped up all the edges with newsprint, and now she's ready to pull it out. I think what we're going to do is um, moisten the back of these pieces of paper uh, to get them to um, lay on the gel properly. Okay, you ready? I don't know. Moment of truth. Woo -hoo -hoo. Do you swipe it on the... I just, yeah, I just drag it across the edge. That'll squeegee it out. Oh, yeah, that blue fuck, all went down. We're going to have to do something about that. Okay, let's see, let's see it. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. She combed that with, um, the, did you use a professional comb or the comb you made? I used the comb I made. That's cool. So you just run a comb through that, and it creates those marble patterns. Are you hanging this up to dry? Yep, yeah, I'm going to hang this outside. This is my friend Stacy. <laughs> so she's going to brave it into it. Now that Ariel's cleaned her tray here. But I've got this one that I decided to do on fabric. So I've got a small bit of habitat fabric that I cut to fit this tray. I laid my pattern down. I didn't like the way it did, so I just marbled it with this comb some. And now I'm going to pull it off and uh, you just kind of squeegee it up like this. And this is my pattern. I have a little tub of water here. I just rinse it off real well. So this is all rinsed. And then I'll hang this to dry.
Oh, sounds like some fine bones. <laughs> <laughs> Now my hands are all goopy. All right. Ooh, watch out. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, you're fine. My studio's not kid friendly. I can imagine. I can never have kids over here. Oh. oh. I forgot I was tracking. Let's see. Let's see. Woo! <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. So Stacy joined in the fun. This is my first piece of fabric. That actually came out pretty well, considering I messed up the design. And then this is Stacy's. This is on Habitai. Um, and then this is that crepe de chine blank that I had to do in sections. And so it didn't come out. Crepe de chine doesn't do as well on the marbling. I have to say. This is one area where I like the habit tie better. And so we're going to do the rest of these tomorrow. Here's some of the papers that we got started on. This one is dry. This is the first one I did. Did. Ariel did this one too? I believe so, yes. Oh look. A little bit of paint on that one. And then she did this one. Woohoo!